navigating the intricate web of identity politics, socioeconomic gaps, and communal progress is indeed a multifaceted endeavor. Not to mention, when you look at how the plan on supporting themselves, uh, it's pulling a lot of the resources and uh, the tax bases from Baton Rouge, stuff that has been used to 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 keep our city stable, right? Um, so I think uh, Sharon Weston Broom, the mayor there, said the city of Baton Rouge could lose at least forty six million dollars annually as a result of this, at, at least and probably more, right? Um, so you take all that into account. This is going to hurt the underserved. Uh, this is going to be paid for on the backs of poor black folks, right? Because when you think about Baton Rouge, people always assume that folks that look like me that live in certain communities don't pay taxes. And, and, and that's very far from the truth. We are property owners where everything else in our tax dollars go towards making this city uh, a stable place to live. Um, and when you do something like this, you put jeopardy, you put all of that in jeopardy, right? Um, and it continually affects people that look like me in certain communities. Um, and, and, and that's sometimes what folks don't understand, even the folks that look like me, right? Um, because my kids, they're going to be fine, right? I'm going to be fine. You know, I'm an educated black man that makes a certain income level, right? But it's the folks that that are just on that line, right? That, that live in certain communities that are just on that line. They're going to feel the brunt of this impact. And largely, man, they don't even understand what's going on. Um, because of the information that's rolled out, which is really the rough part. All right, Eugene Collins, former president of the NAACP in Baton Rouge, we appreciate your time, and thank you for bringing us the latest and the details on this out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Thank you, sir. While duly recognizing valid concerns from various quarters regarding gentrification and fiscal matters, it is imperative to caution against adopting divisive narratives and measures that could inflame societal frictions and jeopardize collective welfare. Embracing an inclusive stance towards urban development and economic advancement, one that earnestly addresses the diverse needs and aspirations of all residents, irrespective of racial or economic backgrounds, emerges as a viable path forward. Central to this approach are the tenets of property rights, economic equilibrium, and upholding the sanctity of legal frameworks. Skepticism towards polarizing rhetoric and the potential ramifications of separatist initiatives like the establishment of new enclaves in response to gentrification concerns, is warranted. Attempts to splinter existing communities may engender confusion and pose risks to broader social interests, which typically endorse social cohesion and reverence for established institutions. Delving into the psychological underpinnings of attitudes and behaviors reveals the influence of identity constructs, group dynamics, and perceived threats in shaping individual reactions to gentrification and communal evolution. Addressing entrenched barriers to equal opportunities, while fostering empathy and mutual understanding across divergent viewpoints, while considering the adverse effects of economic instability and societal disparities on marginalized groups, assumes paramount importance.